pepper, roasted mushroom, and roasted fresh sweet corn tacos topped with an amazing guacamole. It's so simple, it's so affordable, and well, it's just so delicious. Look at this, how beautiful is that? Right out of the oven, into my hands. Right on, let's get cooking, and we're gonna hear all about you throughout the show, so uh, take it away. All right, let's do it. So again, I, I, this is uh, four husks of, um, four ears of sweet corn, which I put in the oven, 350 degrees. It's really simple. You can leave it. You can go do your work, hang out with your kids, whatever you got going on. Um, the mushrooms too, these are white mushrooms, which I rinsed, then I sliced, and same with the pepper, really easy. About two minutes to prepare this. It's so, so simple. So we're gonna take that. First thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go make our guacamole. This is like my favorite thing in the world to make. This is the best freshest, most delicious guacamole. So right here I have fresh cilantro. You can see I actually keep the stems. Here's a quick tip for anyone out there. If you like guacamole like me, I am like a guacaholic. You wanna make sure you keep the stems on. Cilantro is a big part of every piece, every guacamole, and actually the stems obtain most of the flavor. So stems on in guacamole. So I have cilantro right there. You can see a nice, big portion of cilantro. I have a jalapeno pepper. I'll de-seed that since the seeds is where it's spicy. And then I've got a sweet onion. I use sweet onion rather than a traditional white onion or red onion, just because red onion and white onion tends to be pretty bitter. And we want our guac, guac to be creamy and limey and delicious. So there we go. So I'm gonna chop this up really quickly, uh, but I'm so glad you guys could join. I'm so glad to be here with Jane and with Paige and uh, everything that they're doing. I love being a part of this. You guys have seen me on here before. Uh, what an amazing cause that they are, are taking uh, part in. And I hope that everyone's safe and healthy and as happy as they possibly can be uh, during this time. So here's my lime. I'm gonna cut this in half. This is nice and juicy. Little quick, <laughs> oh, that's my puppy. She's excited. Quick tip about the lime. You see how it's like really soft <laughs> and tender? That's a nice juicy lime. That's one of the ways you can check in the grocery store is uh, checking how tender it is. All right, so I cut that lime open. I use one lime per one avocado. And the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut that avocado open. Here's a trick about avocados too. You see right here on the inside of the avocado, it's actually green. So there's like this little um, piece on the top, a little like uh, stem on the avocado. When you're in the grocery store, there's two ways you can check an avocado. One, the color. You see how it's dark? That indicates it's ripe. Two is the tender touch. You see how it's tender? It's not like you can push all the way through it, but it is tender to our touch. And then three, and this is actually the most important way to tell if you have a ripe avocado or if you have an avocado that's gone bad. And it's right here. You take off the stem and then inside of it, you can see there, it's nice and green. You see, it's a healthy green avocado. Yes. Under, right, Paige, and that's so cool. What oh, yeah. I'm telling you, 100% of the time, when you cut open an avocado, when you remove that uh, little um, stem and the inside is green, you're going to have a perfect green avocado. Oh, I've this done this over and over again, thousands of times. Yeah. No wonder they call you the king of the produce aisle. You are the produce. <laughs> yeah, produce I've been, I've been, I know too much about produce. Now you can never know enough. I mean, what an important thing to know about your food, your fruits and your vegetables. I only eat fruits and vegetables. I haven't disappeared. I haven't withered away. I felt better than I've ever felt in my life. And I think it's really important uh, to know your food, to appreciate your food. And, um, yeah, I mean, fruits and vegetables, they are food. That's what we're supposed to be eating. So ready? Here's the reveal. Since I just told you the inside of that was green uh, and the outside was dark, but look at the inside of the avocado. You see how there's no brown on there? Ooh, yeah, that's a perfect avocado. So the way that I was able to tell it that was a perfect avocado and it works every single time. It's almost like magic. You'll never, ever go home with a brown or black inside of an avocado because you know it can taste a little bitter. It doesn't taste very good when avocados have gone bad. It's popping off that stem, looking on the inside if it's green you know you have a winner. Now you guys are gonna take all the good avocados. I'm not gonna have any good avocados anymore. But that's there's plenty, there's plenty. <laughs> there's plenty to share. So yeah. a little tip and trick for avocados. Um, okay, well, Marley, while you're cutting that avocado, ooh, oh. tell us about the produce section challenge. You, you are well known for that. You even have a show, YouTube, a whole nine yards. So tell us all about that. 
Yeah, the produce section challenge is something that's really important to me. It So I did 800 consecutive, it was actually like 852, 853, it was in the 850s, uh, consecutive days of eating only out of the produce section of the grocery store. And a lot of people, when they think about the, the grocery store, they've been told or they've heard about, you know, shop the exterior, don't shop the interior aisles. That's usually where the saltier sweet snacks are, the chips, the donuts, all the things that we know we're not supposed to eat. Um, but they tell you to shop the exterior. Well, I went a little further and said, I'm just going to shop the produce section challenge. I mean, the produce section of the grocery store. It's the colorful section. It's the alive section. It's the one where they turn on the mist and the water uh, to keep all the healthy uh, fruits and vegetables alive. And so I only shopped out of the produce section. I only eat out of there. And I did it for a few reasons. One, because I want to show people how easy and simple it can be. Uh, two, I want to show people how affordable it can be. I wanted people to see that really, it's really, really, really affordable to eat healthy. I'd show my receipt every single day so people had transparency. So no matter how much they didn't want to believe that I was eating three meals for under $10 every single day, that it was actually true. And I was showing them the receipt with every single thing all the way down to the, the, the last cent. So, so, and the third thing is obviously the benefit that this does for animals and the benefit this does for the environment. Think about how much more of a sustainable world we have if we eat only fruits and vegetables, not over-processing, not tons of food waste, um, not no innocent animals killed or harmed in eating the fruits and vegetables. And so it's really, really important, not just for ourselves and our own health, which just will, will make a world of difference. You're not gonna wither away, you're not gonna be protein deficient, you're not gonna have any trouble, don't worry. I've never eaten meat or fish in my entire life, never even tried it, never even taken one bite of meat and fish and I'm still here and healthy and happy. So I wanted just to show um, that one, it can be affordable if you don't have a lot of money and you feel like there's no way that you can be healthy. There is, there is hope. I, I hope that I can show that to you. And two, that it can be delicious. Uh, so if you feel as though you're gonna miss out on this tasty, amazing food, please don't worry. You're gonna try some of the most delicious and incredible meals you've ever had. I would actually say your life will become much more enjoyable and much more flavorful and you actually, you actually will find an appreciation for food that you've never had before. And it really is true. And, and once you start tasting some of these flavors, you're going to be shocked and, and, and amazed. You're going to question why you haven't had a, a ripe, um, gorgeous mango in months or why you haven't had a, a bowl of raspberries or a bowl of fresh picked cherries in, in years. And, and it's going to absolutely change your perspective of food and change your relationship with, with pretty much everything in life. So that's why it's important right. and, and it will make a world of difference in your lives. You know what, Marlene, and you have a newbie, the little baby girl coming into this world. What, so what's happening with the avocado though? Because I want to get back avocado. to the cooking. What you got going on? I'm peeling the avocado. I'm about to chop it up throw it in a bowl with some limes, some mm. jalapeno peppers, some cilantro and some sweet onion. Again, if you're making guac, this will be hands down the best guacamole you've ever had. And it, it really comes down to a couple things. One, is the equal ratio of lime to avocado. So I use one lime for every avocado. So I want to make a bigger bowl, three avocados, three limes. I want to make a smaller bowl, one avocado, one lime. Lime to avocado ratio in guacamole makes a big difference. This is a nice, limey, juicy, delicious, creamy guacamole. The second thing that's very important when you're making guacamole, and I know a lot of people love guacamole, is to use a sweet onion. I can't emphasize that enough. A sweet onion rather than using a red onion or a white onion. Oftentimes when you get guacamole in the store, you get guacamole at a friend's party, they're gonna use a white onion. Now white onions are much, much more bitter. Trust me as the produce guy. I've tried every single onion that there is out there and there's thousands of onions. The best ones are always gonna be the sweetest if you don't want the guacamole to be overpowered with that bitter onion taste. If you want a bitter guacamole, then sure, you know, white onion might be the way to go. But if you want a nice, sweet, creamy, let the avocado shine guacamole, I highly, highly recommend that you use a sweet onion. Okay, can you show us your sweet onion? Yeah, here <laughs> <laughs> I talked about that sweet onion so much. Like, there it is, it's beautiful, it's big. Oh yeah, it's, oh yeah. And I won't use too much. I don't go, I don't go onion crazy in my guacamole, I, I'm about, I would at the most use a half of a guacamole, probably around a quarter. I mean, I'm half of a uh, onion, probably around a quarter of an onion. And it, okay. uh, I, I kind of, I use one small jalapeno, DC the jalapeno. Well, it depends. If you're a spice fan, if you're like, I want my stuff spicy, I like the heat, bring it. Um, so here's the size of my jalapeno. Then go for it. Use a 
uh, use the seeds. But if you just want to have a more mild guacamole and you want the avocado to be the star of your guac, which I tend to prefer, uh, then you want to want to de-seed it because the seeds is where a lot of the heat is in the jalapeno. And every jalapeno is honestly going to be different. Um, you can actually cut a tiny little piece of a jalapeno off and take a bite, and that's going to give you a little sense of the heat um, because one jalapeno might be extremely spicy and one jalapeno might be really mild. They are all different. That's one of the cool parts about fruits and vegetables is that they have a unique – flavor uh, of their own so okay. so listen we have a couple questions here for you okay cool. but show us your cutting board will you because everyone you know we like to see the vis jalapeno uh some corn tortillas yeah and uh so i'm chopping it and put it in a bowl i'm gonna show you the bowl in one second too i'm gonna try to move a little quickly here all right. Oh, that sounds good. This um, is what I'm actually eating for lunch. So, you know, I got to make sure it's, 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 it's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now people are asking, how do you choose your produce? We know how now how you do the avocado and, and how do you keep your produce fresh? Uh, okay. So yeah. great questions. One, how do I check? How do I pick my produce? Uh, ideally organic. Um, and oftentimes you actually find out that most of the times organic is very close in price to conventional only rarely in some items will you see that non-organic is is more affordable. If it's a drastic difference, two to three dollars, then you can go with the conventional, depending on obviously what it is. If it has appeal, if it doesn't have appeal, um, but, but really it depends on your budget. And I just don't want anyone that doesn't have a lot of money to be left out and eating this way. And then so two, so so picking produce, one, um, try to get the healthier organic. Two, look for the color. The color is the best indicator of a fruit and vegetables ripeness. It depends on if you're buying two days out, three days out, four days out, if you're buying to eat that day. I prefer to buy to eat that day. It's just the way I like to do it. I go shop at the grocery store. A little harder with COVID right now. A little bit more challenging if you live farther away from a grocery store. But if you're buying for today, the color. So aroma tomato, you'll see some of them will be lighter in color and some of them will be darker in color. You might see one tomato that is like the perfect rich red color. Like it is, it is gorgeous. It's like deep, dark, beautiful red. You might see another Roma tomato that's more on the light side. If you want more of the flavor, go with a darker red tomato. Same thing with avocados. Go with the darker avocado. Go with anything that is darker. Same with limes. You want a lime that has darker color. You see how this is like a darker lime? That means it's juicier, yeah. it's riper. It means it's sweeter. Um, okay, so darker. Always go for the color. The color is the number one indicator for fruits and vegetables. So that's when I shop. That's what I look for. Um, number two, what was the other one that someone asked? Someone asked something else. <laughs> oh, yeah. well, how do you keep it fresh? How do you keep it fresh? Great. There's so many hacks. Like, for example, cilantro, you can put the stems in water. Or the best way to keep fruits and vegetables fresh is the refrigerator. The refrigerator is going to give you the longest life um, for your fruits and vegetables. Now, I don't use bags. I don't use plastic bags. I've never used these in my whole life. Um, and for environmental reasons, but also just because I never felt like they were necessary. Uh, the bags in the produce section, you know how a lot of people will take out these little plastic bags and they'll wrap around all their fruits and vegetables. I feel like you're like suffocating your little fruits and vegetables. I don't think that's actually going to make much of a difference in terms of keeping them uh, fresh for longer. The biggest difference is going to be use one of the drawers in the bottom of your refrigerator and put your, your lettuce and your uh, fruits and your vegetables inside of the refrigerator. That's going to keep them fresh longer. You can freeze stuff as well, depending on your use. It really depends. because So if you're going to buy a bunch of raspberries and blueberries and blackberries and you want to make shakes, then you can freeze them. It's totally fine. They're going to taste great in a shake. When you freeze vegetables, they do have a different taste, just to make sure everyone understands that. When you get a pack of frozen vegetables, which is more affordable, actually, and it has lots of nutrients, it's just as equal, if not more, nutrients in frozen vegetables since they're frozen at the source and it holds in the nutrients. But they are going to have a little bit of taste. It retains water, it cooks a little differently, and it tastes a little differently. So if you buy fresh vegetables versus frozen vegetables, frozen vegetables nutritionally equal, if not better, affordability more affordable. but will taste not as good as fresh vegetables. So, but you can freeze stuff. That's one way to keep it, uh, make it last and keep it in a fresh state. Refrigerate things, that'll keep it with that same fresh taste and make it last a few more days. Um, and there's also ways to seal things like onions and stuff. You can put it in a, in a jar, put a lid on it. It's gonna last way longer. So some tips and tricks, hopefully those help. <laughs> oh yeah, those are great tips. So such great tips, okay. Whew. 
you're making some guacamole, yummy, yum. And then we baked all the mushrooms and we baked all the corn. So that was easy. I didn't use any oil. I, I'm oil free. I don't cook with any oil. I know Paige, okay. Paige knows that. Uh, that's really important to me um, and because oil is the highest density of, ca of calories and not just to, to not gain weight, but also it's good for your arteries not to eat oil. Um, oil is, is really not super beneficial for you, especially in a time when a lot of Americans are struggling with their health. I would highly advise you not to eat oil. Uh, you'll notice that your food actually tastes better with that oil. You can roast, you can pan fry, you can do everything with that oil and it'll make a huge difference in your, in your health for sure. All right. So how are we doing there? Can we see? We're doing good. So here, here's where I'm at right now. I've got the cilantro and the avocado and I'm about to cut up the onion really quickly. And then I'm, I got the jalapeno in there as well. Uh, I, uh, um, I diced the jalapeno, I just rough chopped the cilantro, and then I sliced the avocado. I'm gonna mash it all with a fork. Right now I'm cutting into the onion. I'm just gonna dice the onion as well. I'm gonna do a quarter of a sweet onion. There it is, right there. So we're just gonna cut that into uh, some small little pieces, toss it in. I'm gonna squeeze some fresh lime on top of it, and then I'll mash it with a fork and we've got ourselves guacamole. I'll do the tortillas in a pan, no oil. They'll get nice and soft, and uh, it's really easy to do it on the stove. You just turn the stove on, you throw the tortillas in one at a time, and they'll become nice and, and soft and warm, and they'll get a little color uh, to them brown. And uh, it really changes. If you've never made tortillas in a pan on the stove, I really highly recommend it. It really makes tortillas taste amazing. I use corn tortillas. Well, how do you keep it from sticking on your pan? Surprisingly, nothing sticks. I know it's shocking. It's mind-blowing. And, and, uh, but things don't stick. And here's the trick. How do you not get it to stick? Make the pan hot before you add anything to it. That is the, the mm -hmm. trick not to get things to stick. The pan is already hot. So if you have the stove, so actually let's turn that on right now. So I'm gonna go turn the stove on really quickly. If the pan is hot, before I add the tortilla in, it will not stick. If the pan was, was not hot, then it would probably have higher chance of sticking. But this actually works on stainless steel pans, uh, ceramic pans, or even on nonstick pans. But nice. but but non nonstick, like regular traditional pots and pans, that stuff doesn't stick. And you can use just a tiny little bit of water. I'm not going to use them on the tortilla. But but the best way to pan fry, the best way to cook things without oil, is get the pot hot first. Then add in the vegetables. Remember that every single fruit and every single vegetable contains a very high uh, content of water. So when you look at like strawberries and raspberries and blueberries or even onions, you can see like you see all this water all over my hand. I haven't touched any water. I haven't turned, in, turned on any water. The, the knife, you see the water on that. The water is coming from the onion. It's juicy. That's why the juice, right? It's, it's the water. We have, we have a lot of fruits and vegetables are in the 90s or in the 80s in terms of water content, meaning they're made up of water. So when you juice them, that's how you make all the juice. But the same thing occurs when fruits and vegetables are cooked in a skillet or on a stovetop. They will naturally release their own waters, and those juices will all blend together in the bottom of your pan, and it makes this amazing flavor. That's why like, when you cook mushrooms down, they call it like, umami, the umami flavor. Um, it's really just the mushroom juices being released because mushrooms are highly, highly uh, uh, made up of water. They have water density. It's very strong inside of them. So those are things to think about. Okay, I got the onions. I'm going to toss that in there, but it will not stick. Don't worry. Trust me. I know. Don't have fear. The Lots of commercials have told us that it will stick if we don't add oil, but in reality, it actually doesn't. Um, <laughs> make sure you get yeah. it. That's awesome. And I think what you're saying is just keep, keep track of it. Stay on top of it. Ooh, there goes the lime. The squeezy, lime. squeezy, one to one. So it's one lime, one avocado, right? Yep, exactly. One to one. See, Paige is, Paige is on it. Paige is about to attention. And you got you know, <laughs> California out there. You've got that amazing California box. Uh, California avocados, which are incredible. Mexican avocados, avocados from Mexico are, are amazing. The Haas avocado uh, is more common out there, which is nice and creamy. Um, Carolina, my, my wife, she's from the Dominican Republic, and they have, uh, I think they call them like the bacon avocado is what they call it or something, but it's, it's a larger avocado, and it's smoother on the skin, but it's a little bit less flavorful. The Haas avocado is much more flavorful, so it's much more preferable for guacamole, um, but both are delicious in their own. In their own ways it's one of the coolest things about fruits and vegetables guys is that there are so many types and once you really get into it once you become like a fruitaholic or a, a, a vegetable 
aficionado, you're going to start to understand and start to really enjoy all the different types of mandarins, all the different types of pears, all the different types of, of peaches and apples. And most people know about all the different types of apples, but there's so many different types of every single fruit and vegetable and every single one tastes differently in its own way. And you're going to fall in love with every single one of them. So that's one of the coolest thing. It's really unlimited. That's why I was able to make like thousands and thousands of different recipes because there's thousands and thousands and thousands of different fruits and vegetables. And, uh, and so you get different flavors depending on which one you use. So I think it's really cool. It's really fun. It's, I'm telling you guys, you do this, not only will you shed some pounds and feel better, but you'll realize really quickly how good this food tastes. Yeah. Well, you're so vibrant. Hey, so you are a film and television actor. Yeah. Uh, how did you come by way of, oh, okay, everybody, look at it, it's coming together. That Molly. How did you become vegan? We need to hear your vegan story. That's a great question. Um, so how long have I been vegan now? So I've been vegetarian my whole life, but I wasn't vegan my whole life. I've been vegan, let's see, five, six years, maybe six years. I actually don't know. I, I switched in one day. Um, what was the, what was the, you know, the snap? What was the, you know, moment of recognition? That's such a good question. I'm trying to remember the, the day, the thing that made me switch. And I think it was a documentary. I can't, I can't remember. There were so many, it was before, I was vegan before I did the produce section challenge. Oh, no. See, I remember, so I remember how I became doing the produce section challenge. It was like that was like a, a big moment in my life when I thought about that. Being vegan was a big moment in my life as well. Um, I, I'll never not be vegan. It's so simple. It's so easy. It's the way to live. It's the only way to be cruelty free and, and, make, and make a big impact. But I'm trying to think, when was the day that I just said no more cheese, no more eggs, no more milk, no more dairy? Um, it's got to be like six years ago. I don't know. I haven't even thought about it. Like the, I was, I think it was a documentary, but I was vegan for maybe three years, three and a half years before I did the produce section challenge. Um, what was it that did it? I think it was a documentary. It might have been Cowspiracy. Yeah, that's the one for me because you're an environmentalist too, right? Yeah, yeah, I care about yeah. all, all aspects of it, and that's why. So I originally wasn't vegan for health. Um, so it wasn't health that actually made me go vegan, which. I think would surprise a lot of people because the produce section challenge uh, is, is really about health and it, everything else comes along with it. I don't look at veganism. I don't compartmentalize veganism in terms of like, you can only be vegan for the animals or you can only be vegan for the environment or you can only be vegan for your health. I, I don't look at it like that. That's maybe why I don't really remember the exact day I switched. Um, yeah. I don't know that I switched around five or six years ago. I think it was six years ago. I would say six years ago. Time flies. Um, but I, I mean, it's for life. So I don't even need to count the days or count the months or count the years. It's irrelevant. I, I switched and I never going to, I mean, I never even ate meat or fish. So I don't, but I wish I could tell you the exact, I think it was cowspiracy. I'd say 99% sure. 1% chance it's not. I just don't want to miss something. <laughs> um, okay. What's next? It was more for the, the animals. Definitely was the animals was the reason why yeah. I switched to become vegan. Um, I switched from from, I guess the labels are, are tricky, but I guess I would switch from vegan. I still don't eat any meat or fish or any dairy products or any eggs. I haven't touched those in six, six, seven years. Um, I never had any meat in my life, but I switched from, from eating like more than some of the processed foods. Cause there's a lot of like vegan junk foods. Um, I switched and ate only fruits and vegetables. I made that switch uh, three years ago. So, okay. so yeah, three, so that's right. So six years and then three years. Um, three years of only eating fruits and vegetables. It's still technically vegan, um, but I don't eat any processed foods. So we're talking about like the, the fake meats, the fake cheeses. I, I don't eat any of that as well. Um, so let me throw some tortillas in. So that was, that was for health. So I guess I switched originally like six years ago for animals, three years ago and born vegetarian for animals. Uh, and then for health, I switched three years ago. I hope that, that it's clear. Yeah, that was, that's really great. That's so inspiring. So we're going to okay. throw tortillas on there. All right. Into the pan they go. But it really doesn't matter what makes you do this. It's just that you get there. That's really what's most important. Um, and I think so. So being born vegetarian, I think, let me talk about this really quickly. So my mom, so my name is Marley after Bob Marley. And as you would probably be surprised because most people are named Mike or, or Carol or, or Catherine or there's names that are very common that you hear all the time. John, that's my uncle. My dad's name's Bob. My mom's name's Helen. They're very common names. 
and they named me Marley after Bob Marley, my brother Lennon after John Lennon. So already you have a little bit of a alternative upbringing. And then second, they named, I mean, they raised us homeschooled until I was in fifth grade, I was homeschooled. So I was taught at home by my mom and dad. I actually went into school uh, four years ahead in mathematics and three years ahead in uh, English. So I was actually far ahead when I went to school. I was taking all AP classes, got college credit. I uh, was 10th in my whole class out of 222 people being homeschooled. So there's definitely benefits to, to thinking outside the box, not thinking I have to go to school at age two and, and so and so. And then the other things, there's a lot of other things. But my mom was doing yoga before anyone was doing yoga. She was be vegetarian before a lot of people were vegetarian. When I was vegetarian as a child, I was the only one in my entire school, a thousand kids that was vegetarian. And it was interesting being vegetarian at that time because there weren't very many products. And there, there wasn't, there was maybe, I think tofurkey was around back then, but it's very on a limited scale. And it wasn't as mainstream as it is now. Restaurants only had a side of potatoes or a side of broccoli. Uh, so it was much different back then, but still equally as important back then as it is today. Those cows' lives or chickens' lives or, or sheep's lives or, or goats' lives back then are just as valuable as they are today. They're still really important. Um, and so, but it's just perspective is changing and things are changing and things like, 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 for example, the CD was popular 20 years ago and now you have, uh, streaming. So I, you got to look at it like that. Like it may have seen, it may have seemed alternative back then, but all those things that were seemed alternative, like composting 20 years ago, people were like, what are you doing composting? Why are you throwing your food out on the, on the ground? But now it's becoming more mainstream. Being mm -hmm. vegan back then, everyone's like, what do you mean? Where do you get your protein? Why are you not eating, eating fruit? I mean, why are you not eating uh, animals? Like, where's your animal protein? You can be so much bigger. You can be so much stronger. But then you move 10 years and they realize all these plant-based athletes, all these successful people, these professional athletes are now eating that way. So please look at what you're doing and ask yourself, am I really doing the right thing for me, for my family, for the planet, and for the world? And because living alternatively actually is probably what's going to become more mainstream later on yeah. it's that people haven't figured it out yet. So okay. now, now you've got all the celebrities naming their kids like Blue Ivy and all these all these interesting, unique names. Right. Your mom is doing it before that, you know, so it's something to think about. Uh, it's OK to be unique. It's actually it's actually encouraged to be unique. Be different. Be yourself. Don't be what they want you to be in terms of checking off a box, like my name needs to be John, I need to start school at two years old, and so forth. You need to be you, you need to believe in what you want to believe in. But this, is, this is a really important thing. It's gonna become even more and more wide, widely accepted. I think ever, I truly genuinely believe in 10 years from now, we will see a vast majority of people that are vegans, if not 80 to 90% of people. And people will look back and they'll say, oh, of course I'm vegan, I never wouldn't have been vegan. But it, we have to get to that point. So that's coming soon. Um, awesome. If you want to join early, that'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Marley, also, what is the weirdest veggie or fruit that you have ever eaten? What is the strangest, weirdest? Oh, man. Veggie or fruit? That's a good one, huh? Passion fruit or... Yeah, the fruit's pretty slimy. Uh, passion <laughs> fruit juice is really good. You know, I was flying to Hawaii when I was young, and I had this memory when I was on this airplane. Um, there's a small little airplane. We were going to Kauai and we were going from the main island in Hawaii to Kauai and we were on this little, little jet and they had, they handed out this really delicious passion fruit juice, um, that was local from Hawaii on the plane. And I remember it was so good. I was like, oh my gosh. So as soon as I got there, I got to the grocery store and I went and got, you can tell even as a 10 year old, I was pretty obsessed with fruits and vegetables, but I went and got this, um, amazing delicious passion fruit juice that was like fresh from the island and i drank it when i was there and then you know since eating passion fruit a decent amount of times after that you realize that the juice is delicious and fresh and and, and sweet but then the, the actual passion fruit is pretty slimy so that's definitely one of them um there's some weird ones that taste amazing as well like like lychees they kind of look a little weird slimy um but they're actually incredible uh, I like every fruit and vegetables, but there's some weird slimy ones. Um, but yeah, lychees are probably one of the weirdest looking ones. Oh yeah, those are weird. But they're Wait, Mark, also I have my a, favorites. I have a question for you. How long do you cook that corn tortilla in there? Do you cook it for a while? Depends on how hot the stove is. So I had just turned it so it's probably pretty good. Look at how soft it is. <laughs> yeah, it's got that nice golden brown on it. Um, a couple of these. And then I will move on to throw the vegetables in the pan. So we'll just do two of them. But there you go. That's what it looks like before. Toss it in there. And yeah. there we go. So I'm gonna cut up all the I'm gonna cut up all those vegetables now. I also 
Let me grab these. Okay. So here I'm going to do something really quick. I'm going to take these corns. You can cut the corn right off the cob or off the ear. All you okay. have to do is hold it up like this. Take a knife and slice down it. It's really simple. Um, it's really yeah. It'll surprise you how easy it is. Do you mind if you just tilt your computer just a little bit yeah. so we can yeah. scratch it? Because your cutting, I'm sure, is is special. Oh yeah, okay. Let's see. Can, you, can you see it? I don't know how special. Yeah, we can see it. We can see it. We can see it. This is fun. Okay, here you yeah. go. And, and, and just Tom, wants, Tom wants to know: Did you watch the Game Changers? Did you see that film? Yeah, I did. I actually went to the premiere of that that film. It was great, and I saw Paige there. Paige interviewed oh, me. Oh yeah, we were there. Premiere. <laughs> that was <laughs> fun. That was fun. That was fun. I thought Game Changers was great. I think that's another, um, that's another way to look into the health benefits of it and the performance aspect of it, and thinking of your body as as really something that's really important. And, and it is. It's your vessel. It's your temple. It's you know. There's so many different words you can call it, but it's your it, it's your most important thing. We care for our cars so much. We care for our clothes so much. We care for our homes so much. But oftentimes we forget to care for our body. And remember, that's all you really have. If you didn't have any money, or you, they, they can't evict you from your body. Uh, not yet, at least. So it's very important that you take care of it. Uh, and then you do everything you can and you learn about it. And so Game Changers was really great because it's just showing that there's actually ways to increase your performance by eating healthier, which makes sense. I mean, you would think that you would perform better if you – had a body that was healthier. So, and fruits and vegetables, they're just showing the power of that. And uh, that, look, these super strong people, um, they're just busting myths, really. Uh, so it's great. I think it's an eye opener for a lot of people. What the Health was an eye opener, I think, for a lot of people. Um, those documentaries are awesome. Some, uh, they just sent me a screener for Kiss the Ground. Uh, I actually thought that film was really interesting in the environmental side of it, um, the importance yeah. of soil, because that all, it all makes sense. The, the, the more you simplify life, you actually realize uh, how easy and how perfectly everything was set up for us. Like just, just eat the fruits and vegetables. They're sweet and they're super colorful. And the more colorful they are, the sweeter they are. And, and, the, and the more colorful stuff you eat, the healthier you are. And, uh, and it's amazing how simple it really is. If you just, if you get a, rid of, get out of our own heads and simplify everything, I like to equate it to writing. When I was learning writing, when I went to college, uh, I went to Holy Cross in Massachusetts for my freshman year. And then I graduated uh, with a political science and economics major from, from University of Miami after that. But what I realized was like my first year, I spent so much time in writing labs. I spent at least six to seven hours a day working on my writing. And it took so many hours and so many days of hard work and struggle in order to become a good writer. And when I, what I learned to become a good writer was that really you have to strip away all that you know and simplify things. You, how do you say things in the most simplest, in the simplest and easiest ways to communicate? Because that's what writing is all about. It's, it's, uh, it's conveying what you're trying to say in the simplest and shortest and most concise way. And uh, that is something that I learned and, and it took me stripping away. I had to unlearn so much in order to actually learn how to become a good writer. And I think that's the same thing with eating because we think we have to know all these macronutrients and micronutrients and you have to eat this or that or not enough protein or too much protein or not enough aminos or too many aminos. But when you strip away all that and you get out of your own head and you think, is it a fruit, is it a vegetable or is it a packaged good? If you eat the fruit, you eat the vegetable, you're gonna become healthier, your skin's gonna look better, you're gonna become stronger, you're gonna become faster, you're gonna become thinner, you're gonna become healthier. If you eat the packaged good with all those things you have to read, the ingredients, the 50 ingredients, it may have tons of protein in it, but it also has 75 other things you don't know how to pronounce. That's going to make you much less healthy. It's going to make you gain weight. Your body's not going to know how to process it. So I really highly recommend simplify the way you eat, and you will see huge results in your health. Okay, I got that tortilla in there. Hopefully that helps. Awesome. Simplify for your health. Now, what about GMOs? Without getting too political, you know? I mean, the less we change things, the better we will be. So genetically modified organisms, I mean, the more we change things, the more we put chemicals in the ground, the more we destroy our soil. That's why I think um, that documentary was really, really great, um, Kiss the Ground. It's really just talking about the importance of, of our soil, which is growing these fruits and vegetables, because it itself also has lots of nutrients and we, we so oftentimes so here's what the corn looks like i'll cut off really quickly so so oftentimes we will look at that beautiful fresh sweet corn um so oftentimes we will 
really try to do things to save money <laughs> or to make things more streamlined, but that doesn't necessarily always benefit us. Or for example, like we're so afraid of dirt, like we're so afraid of dirt, but you got to understand that if we don't have some germs, how are we going to build up intolerance to germs? So there's certain things that I think we've become like overprotective or, or too productive and it's caused damage. So we become too productive in farming with all these GMOs and all these pesticides and chemicals. So yeah, we can yield more crops, but are we yielding quality crops? Are we actually helping ourselves or are we actually hurting ourselves? Because remember the way that the, the planet wanted it, the way that God wanted it or the, the greater being wanted this to be is for us not to change it to not alter it because remember that's the healthiest the highest the nutrients the richest the the most fertile soils the most uh freshest and healthiest foods so the less you change things the less you complicate things and gmo is just another compl complication uh the better your food's going to be and the healthier your food's going to be such a good point. You know, I want to make a point about the movie to Kiss the Ground. I've studied it uh, immensely. A shout out to uh, Earthling Ed, who's an incredible uh, vegan activist who produces some really amazing, um, uh, you know, short films with his uh, media company called Surge. And he basically broke it down. You know, the thing that we need to be aware of with the soil is that we only have so much soil left and a lot of it is unhealthy because so much has been burned down and, you know, made into crops to feed animals, which is the most inefficient way of, you know, feeding our planet. And that's why there's so many hungry people. One of the reasons, look at this. <gasps> that was some fresh so roasted pepper. Ooh. Um, but I do want to say, so I, uh, you know, the need for soil health is so essential. Kiss the ground. Now there are, very successful farms, which are veganic, regenerative, organic farms. That is the way of the future. We do not need to use the animal. Uh, oh, look at those mushrooms, everybody. Wow, Marley. Yes, I agree with what Paige is saying is actually right on the money. The only critic critique I would have of Kiss the Ground is, okay, I believe in opening people's eyes and, and bringing awareness. And I do genuinely believe that we do have a soil problem and it is something we should worry about, especially because at the end of the day, if we lose the earth, we lose everyone. We lose all the animals and everything that's on it. So we have to protect the earth because that is the mother. That's the, that's the ship that we're all floating through this crazy universe on. So we need to keep it protected. But the only thing I would say about that movie was I didn't necessarily agree with their idea of the cow because when you free range cows or you free range, eat free range, just another label that they're selling you something on. But when you do it as free range, the problem is now you have to clear cut more trees. You have to clear cut more forests because the it's not sustainable to have 4 billion cows. It's just not. Where do you put them? Have you seen the size of a cow? If you've never seen a cow, you need to go see the size of one of these cows. They are absolutely massive. And you put that times 4 billion, like where do you plant them? Where do you, not plant them, they're, they're animals, but where do you put them? Where are they going to eat these crops? It's great to see like the 10 of them that are in Kiss the Ground that are walking around and they're like, wow, look at how sustainable this is. But is it scalable? Can you scale that to the billion people on the planet? Can you put 4 billion yeah. cows out there without cutting down all the trees? Now, what's the effect of not having trees? Now we're not having any oxygen. Now we're really hurting the planet, even probably even greater and faster than the soil. So I think there's, it's tricky. It's a really, it's a balancing act. But the idea to say that it's okay to have 4 billion cows on the planet is, is irresponsible. It's technically not possible. So that was my only criticism. I think that, I think we could just let the, let, let the, let some of the grasses grow more. Plant trees, plant, plant native species and let them grow. Give up some of our, our, uh, crops give up some of our environment that we've taken over if you decrease the amount of cows you're decreasing the amount of places we have to cut down to grow corn or to grow uh, soy or to grow all these other things that are really 90 percent of it is just going to feed those cows in the first place so there's different ways to tackle problems they looked at it from one point of view and not necessarily not necessarily correct but still exciting to someone to talk yes. to soil well, and, and also I want to get back to the food because Betty Graham Cornwall, who watches our shows on a regular basis, along with Tom, who's watching, Betty wants to know, do you peel your peppers before you uh, roast them? Do you peel them? I don't, but that's oh. a good question. Okay. I don't peel them, but good, good question. 
I am. Um, I just want to take a moment. I'm going to come into the feed here for a moment and just talk about real quickly. I want to point out this incredible book called Drawdown, which they refer to in the book. Uh, excuse me, in the film, and the number one and number, uh, excuse me, number three and four ways, and the number one and two ways people can actually make an impact are through uh, plant-based foods increasing to draw down carbon from, uh, you know, to sequester carbon it back in. We need more carbon because we're losing it every second. And also number three, uh, that's number three is plant-based food. Number four, Marley, is composting. So I just wanted to say you brought that up earlier, but wait, I, you're you're mashing. Let's get to let's get to you mashing. Okay, so right now I'm using a fork. I'm pressing gently against the side of the bowl. This will make you the best guac ever. And the reason why it's so important is because I already put all of the ingredients in. Please do this after you've placed all of your ingredients in your bowl. If you do it before, if you put the avocado in, then you mash it, and then you put the onion in and you mash it, you're not gonna get the same effect. And why is that? Because remember the effect, remember that every single fruit and vegetable is full of water and juice. So the water is the juice. But when you smush the onion against the side of the wall with the fork, when you smush the cilantro, which yes, has its own natural juices, uh, against the side of the wall, you're blending them all together, the jalapeno. So now I'm getting the jalapeno juices, smushing with the fresh sweet onion juices, with the cilantro juices and the lime juice. So put all of your ingredients in your bowl before you start to do this kind of mash, mash, whatever you want to call it. But I'm just doing it with a fork, gently smushing it against the sides of the wall. It only takes a minute or two and uh, that's going to release the natural juices and it really pops the flavor of the guacamole. I put a tiny little bit of salt. If you're salt free, you can skip the salt, but I do put a little bit of salt. Uh, I put a little bit of sea salt in here. And now I'm mashing it and I'm just going to whip it around with the fork right there. This is so good. And then I'll show you what it looks like. Super simple. Yep. But that's a really um, important step as well. Look at that. There you go. Guacamole. Nice and chunky. Nice and creamy. Looks so creamy. So delicious. So tasty. Oh my gosh, Marley, this is incredible. We are having so much fun. Okay. So we're, we should probably speed along to what's next. Cause I'm noticing our time frame and, uh, yeah. you're busy yeah. I'm going to run two in six minutes, so yes. we're going to make this happen. <laughs> I'm like watching the clock. I'm like, okay, I got six minutes. Let's go. Can, we got this. Tacos, but I'm pretty much done. So that was super simple. Again, I put sliced white mushrooms, uh, sliced red bell pepper, and I put uh, corn in the oven. I uh, roasted it at 350 degrees, about 20 to 30 minutes until it's nice and soft and tender. Then I put the sweet corn. Then I put the tortillas right here, these corn tortillas. I tossed them in a pan on the oven, no oil, got them nice and soft and warm. Look at how beautifully uh, done those are. You can see the char more so on this one. See that nice little char from the pan. And now I'm gonna lay the fresh roasted sweet corn, the fresh roasted bell pepper and the mushrooms into that taco. And I'm gonna top it with some guacamole and I'm gonna bite it. And that's what we're gonna do right now. How's that sound? Yummy, woohoo! Oh my gosh, Marley, this has been so exciting. And I know you have a little baby girl on her way. Um, maybe by the end of the year, maybe she'll be a, a 2021 baby starting the new year out. We'll see. Yeah. But, um, raising her, obviously, 100% vegan. That is yep. so great. Vegan children. Yay. Raising up this planet. Look what's going in there, everybody. You've seen this. We've got the corn, the peppers. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yes. Vegan baby coming soon. Vegan baby. Her name is Montauk. Montauk? Yeah. What is that? Uh, that's, where, that's where I was raised. Um, it's a little town on the eastern end of Long Island. Um, it's a little beach town called Montauk. So that's her name is named after my town. Oh, that's beautiful. It's so unique. I love it. Yeah, I couldn't name her uh, Carol. You know what I mean? As much as it's a, it's a great name, I had to I had to be unique. I had to keep the legacy. So there we go. We have mushrooms and corn and bell peppers. Mm. Now I'm just going to throw in some, look at that roasted, look how juicy those are, awesome. Now I'm just going to throw in some guac, hit it with some guac. Hold on, just get a good, good bit of guac in there, oh yes. Oh yeah. Now what do you say to someone if they say, uh, how do I get my B12? How do you get your B12? Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, you take a vitamin. Okay. <laughs> that works. I take vitamins, probably not as much as I probably should. Um, but I take a vitamin at least every every day or every other day. Uh, I think that it's fine. We you should take vitamins if you are eating this way or not eating this way. Um, so you can take a B12 vitamin. It's really simple. Take one every couple of weeks. You probably have a lot stored up in reserve already anyway. 
Um, yeah. yeah, there's like seaweed and kelp and, and nutritional yeast and other things that have B12. I can name like a thousand things that have B12 in them. Or you can yeah. buy fortified soy milk. That's going to have enough B12 for you. Um, but if you're eating just fruits and vegetables, then I would probably just because our soil doesn't have as much B12 as it used to have in it. Um, then I would say just take a vitamin. Um, but if you're, if you're eating some of the other vegan foods like soy milk, then you can buy fortified soy milk. And you're okay. gonna have to be B12 in that, you'll be fine. So those are ways. Okay, let's take a bite of this. Here we go. Oh yeah. Go go ahead, Marley. You're making us all want our lunch. Look at this, or dinner, or wherever you are around the world watching this. Yes. Marley Ficadori. Produce more, right before we take this, right before we take this amazing bite. I want to say one more thing about the vitamins, like the B12, protein, all those things. Remember, I ate only out of the grocery store, ate only out of the produce section of the grocery store. Only fruits and vegetables, not a single thing processed. You don't believe me. Go watch my page, Marley Fick, I mean, uh, Marley Fick Laura on Facebook or Produce Section Challenge, Produce Section Challenge, the group. You can watch my videos. It, it's all up there. The receipts, exactly what I bought, exactly what I ate. And you can see for two and a half years of me only eating fruits and vegetables, and I still only eat fruits and vegetables. I'm just not documenting every single thing I'm doing because I have a baby coming and it's been a crazy year. But if you want to watch a, a, a journal, a diary, a, a really honest real representation of how you look and how you'll feel by eating only fruits and vegetables. Um, you should watch that because it'll ease your mind because not only did I do that, but I also like checked my levels. I, I went and sat on a scale every single day, checked my blood pressure every single day and well, not every day, but I did that like every month or every two months. So you could see my weight. I didn't like disappear. I didn't wither away. My blood pressure didn't go up or go down. It kind of stayed. Well, I already had healthy blood pressure when I started. Um, but it's something to watch, to see, to to ease your mind, to give you a a uh, you know a, some comfort in knowing that this really is going to make a huge difference in your health. You're not going to become vitamin deficient. You're not going to become sick. You're going to become healthy and happy, and it's going to change your life. Yes, I did take a vitamin every couple weeks or or, or once every couple days, but you, and you should take a vitamin. But it's not like you have to take vitamins because you're eating this way. Okay, ready? Let's take a bite of yeah. this. Woohoo! Look at this, everybody. Oh yeah. Marley mm. Ficalore. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. I'm gonna give a shout out to my friend. Look what just showed up in my in my inbox of my mailbox. These are seeds. Okay, these are natural seeds. There's a whole seeding conversation going on. DJ Kaven out of uh, Colorado is bringing beats, as in B-E-A-T music, as well. He's a DJ, and I got my beats. These were featured in People Magazine. Natalie Portman said, hey, go get your this great gift. So it just showed up in the mailbox just now. I want to give a shout out to Marley. Also, the idea that composting is simple and shopping in the produce aisle like Marley does and encourages us. Let's get back to that taco that you're eating. Wow, wow. So much fun to have you with us here so today. Good. I didn't even season this. And this is like, I have literally just put onions, sweet, sweet, sweet onion. No, I put just pepper, sweet corn, and mushrooms on a pan, some parchment paper in the oven. No oil, no seasoning, just roasted it. I took it out. I put it in a soft corn tortilla, no seasoning, just corn flour. And then I put avocados, onions, uh, jalapeno, cilantro, lime juice, mashed it up with a tiny little bit of salt. And this is like out of this world good. It's insane. Because usually I'm like a seasoning sauce boss. I make all sorts of amazing sauces, all sorts of amazing seasonings. But this is really flavorful and really good. And I didn't even season it. So good. Thank you so much. Wait, let me taste it. Bring it a little closer so I can taste it. <laughs> it's, it's so good. It's because this guacamole, I'm telling you, oh. buy a sweet onion, buy one avocado, buy one big juicy lime, buy a, a, a bushel of cilantro, buy uh, a jalapeno, DC the jalapeno, use that sweet onion, use about a quarter of it. I used a quarter of it. Um, and go make this guacamole. And if this guacamole is the best thing you've ever had in your entire life or the best guacamole you've ever had, remember one, one lime for every one avocado, make sure that you pop off the stem and make sure it's green inside so the avocado is creamy and ripe and it's tender to the touch. If this is the best guacamole you've ever had, not just like it's a good guacamole, it's, it's actually, and it's a tiny little bit of sea salt too. If it's the best guacamole you've ever had in your entire life, do the prototection challenge. 
Yeah. Not, it's not possible. You're, you're, it's going to be the best guacamole you've ever had in your life. Best guacamole ever, ever. Marley Ficarore. You can find him on Instagram at Marley Ficarore. You can find him on Facebook, all over the place. Produce Section Challenge. Thanks for joining us here on Lunch Break Live. We'll see you next time. Thank Bye. you, guys. You. Okay. You too.